everybody, welcome to Robert's Train Set. Um, you might um, have an inkling of what this video is about, as I did mention it at the end of my last uh, video. Let's bring in the latest uh, star of the show, and as you can see, it's my latest locomotive acquisition that I mentioned uh, in the video on little trip to Hatton's with the credit card. I didn't actually go there, I did it all by post and internet. Um, and as you can see, it's by Daybolt. Um, this is the second um, locomotive I've had from Daybolt, and you can see on the table before you, um, which used to be Robert's train set, um, my other, which was the 68. This one is a Class 52 Western. Um, which used to run from Paddington Station in West London to the West Country, uh, West of Supermare, Taunton and further afield. So why have I got the two boxes? Um, I just had an inkling that the, the sort of the bubble wrap that this is in was different to what I remember from the 68. And I will show you when I unbox it, um, just the difference. Uh, so. Over the course of um, less than two years, the packaging has changed. The box seems the same, I must admit. So I think we'll go on and start the unboxing. So here we are on the table, and as you can see, it's quite a striking uh, line drawing on the front of the box, as they do on, I think, all of their boxes. Very sturdy box. You can see the idea where Hatton's got their box from for their 66s. So, no further ado, let's uh, take this lid off. So, on immediately opening the box, you can see there's some paperwork. And this refers to this being a sound locomotive. So, these are the instructions um, for the sound. And obviously, here is uh, all the F numbers that you need. As far as the information for DC sound locomotives, I still think you can't beat Hornby's TTS instructions. There are a wealth of information um, in those pages from Hornby. And uh, I think other manufacturers would do well to um, try and emulate that. So let's take the foam off the top. And as you can see, we've got what looks to be the normal sort of uh, clear wrapping. Um, we also have, as you can see here, some detail packs. Um, and amongst them is uh, the etch plate for the name of this locomotive, which is Western Prince. And we have some alternative couplings um, which I found maybe don't work very well on my layout because of the curves. And then we've got quite an extensive little pouch with, with extras in. I have taken now I have taken these out and um, I will show you a picture of them. And there's quite a lot in there. Um, as well as some head codes, because this locomotive has an illuminated head code. So as I said, um, quite an extensive amount. Um, I thought this plate was um, a grill, but I'll explain later in the video on that. And obviously these are the head codes. And they're different um, underbody trays if you don't want to have couplings, and the close couplings obviously. So let's get the loco out of the box. So as you can see, uh, even more information in the top of this. Now this is where this uh, wrapping um, differs from their original wrapping for the 68. So if we take the sleeve off, which is as normal, which, which does come off reasonably easily, although I have had this out obviously, and we've got various, um, there's a lighting guide, which is if you're going to do it um, I think on DC, um, 
There's also a very interesting um, history of the Western Class 52s, um, which is quite detailed actually. I was quite uh, impressed with this. Um, you know, usually to find everything you need to go online, but I've actually got it all here. And obviously there's some lubrication stuff here as well. So quite a, quite a nice little book. And hopefully the, uh, the Daypole No Quibble 24 month mechanical warranty, which obviously we all hope we never need to use. So in the top here is the DC um, planking plate that obviously was taken out when it was turned into a sound decoder. So let's un uh, unwrap this locomotive. Now this is where it changes from, I think, the norm, you know, the, the ones that Batman used and Hornby used, in that there are little poppers on the side. And all you need to do then is just lift off and you can get your hands on the side of the body as long as they're clean. And we can lift this model out. So that's what I shall do. Get rid of the packaging, and there it is. And as you can see, it's in BR Blue the symbol. So I'll just bring this up just to show you what I like about this is it's a completely different shape, isn't it, to any really any other loco, as far as I know. And I've always wanted one of these. Um, I've waited for the sound ones to come out and I'm now pleased that I've got it and the reason I'd like one is I used to live in Shepherd's Bush which wasn't very far from Paddington Station and I used to go and watch trains leaving from here. Now my memory is not that good and it never has been um, but I, I think I must have seen these going out um, and I have a picture um, of me in front of a cream and chocolate carriage uh, with the Merchant Venturer um, branding on it. And it could well have been pulled by one of these, although I look very young and it might have even been a steam logo. I really can't remember, but I know I was sent by myself all the way to Western Supermare. So there we are. So what we're going to do now um, is uh, adjourn to the loft, to the layout and I'll do a little assessment of this and then hopefully we can have a little running session with it because as you might have heard when I in my last video I was running this in. So here we have the uh, locomotive in question on the rails in the fiddle yard. So as I said um, downstairs uh, I do really like the front end uh, it's as detailed except there's not so much detail um, below the and you've probably got the panels on the top that uh, lift off, I would think. Very detailed, actually. I think it looks good. And I always thought this did look different, didn't it? With, you know, the wheels that are open. So here we are. You wonder, what's going on? That was a very short uh, assessment of the loco with a little shot here and a little shot there. So let me explain. Um, if you look at this uh, shot, which is very similar to what you've just seen, there are some differences and the shots you just seen were my sample go at doing uh, this because I've not done one of these before so as you can see I've set up um, a background um, something that maybe might have occurred at uh, either at Paddington or uh, Old Oak which uh, is where a lot of the engines used to be and you might wonder why have we got um, the Earl of St Germans in the background. It's a castle class. And we've got the Ginty there because I like the Ginty. Um, so, basically, I looked at what I saw uh, in the previous shots, and it makes the locomotive look very bland. Um, so, I have actually, as you saw in the detail pack in the box opening put some of the details on. Now it doesn't amount to an awful lot and you can see I've got the name um, on the on the body 
and also up the as you're looking at it now the left hand end where the driver's sitting the number which is D1041 and when I do the front shots uh, I have put some head codes in albeit not very well I think Charlie Bishop would give me three out of ten but I'm new at this and in the process of putting those head codes in I did have to take the body off so I will show you a picture of what it looks like without the body on I must say the body came off very easily uh, four screws at each end easy to assess and very very small screws but not in great big recesses and no problem at all and you just lift the body off obviously there is a wire um, as always to be careful of but yeah nice and easy body removal no bits to sort of get in the way or whatever so lovely well done day pal so um, as you can see um, I will now pan in a bit and we'll have a look at a bit more of the detail so let's go straight into the the name that I've stuck on and there is one on each side of the locomotive so as you see the name Western Prince which uh, was on the, the, the end of the box if you remember and uh, I went on a website where it purported to tell you um, you know how to fit all these details which to a certain extent it did I must admit um, but for gluing this on it said use um, PVA um, which might be perfectly okay I don't know but I've actually used a little bit of card glue um, because I tried my normal method of using uh, blue tack um, which is what I've used on um, the 68 uh, and for this I think because this is a very narrow small sign um, it just didn't take it falling off so yes I've used card glue very thin thing the, the body has got some little dots where these etched plates go which I think is a very good idea so if we just pan along the body slowly as you can see I've got the number there and there isn't one the other end because you've got the BR sign and on the other side it's the opposite so you have the sign at the other end uh, I like the window um, there looking um, looking into the uh, engine area so while we're in uh, this particular view I'm going to go down and try and get in closer to the wheels and as you saw in the previous clip um, I thought these were really good but the bit that uh, I'm sure a lot of um, people would have criticised were the very bright ends of the axles uh, through the wheels now I have looked online at pictures of these and they certainly have a hub like is shown but they certainly don't have the bright ends of the wheel hubs uh, the wheel axles so as you can see here I've now used some black felt uh, black felt tip pen to just blacken them out and, and lose them a bit because they are really obvious on this model because there's no chassis member or bogey member in front of them so I think I hope you'll agree that that's sort of improved it a little bit and makes it look a bit more um, as Charlie Bishop would say phototypical so here we are at the the business end which is the front now this is quite well detailed by Daypole themselves and I haven't had to stick anything on it uh, we've got the vacuum pipes and etc etc uh, and I think it looks rather nice uh, the little hand rails and everything are in place um, you might have seen on the previous bit where I was practicing uh, it was just empty number code boxes so I have attempted <laughs> Uh, and I'm sure uh, Charlie will be very cross with me but I have attempted to get some numbers in there now I did go online as I said and I found this particular locomotive and there was a number code of uh, A169 
Um, so when I came to fit them, there was definitely an A1 in the little uh, packet of uh, numbers that you saw, but there was no 69. So I think in this I've got 68. As you can see, it is illuminated, although I can actually see the light through. So I well, didn't try them on before I did this. So I may. Um, on the website that I went to sort of help you put the bits on, it did say to cut these small, um, an individual. Um, but I think the better course of action is to do, do um, a whole set across, which is what I've done the other end with double noughts. Um, and I think if you do that, you won't see the light through. So I will probably redo this later on, but I have made an attempt. <laughs> So, as you can see, the front light, which is here, is very, very small. Um, and you just get that little light and obviously the head code lit. Um, without the numbers in, the head code is very bright. But yes, I like it. And as I said, I think the shape is very distinctive, isn't it? So, I've now re relocated to the other end of the locomotive. And as you can see, this is far more effective with the number code. I put double O in and uh, I did try and put the square blobs but I'd cut them small so this is actually just cut into one piece and it does work a lot better still about a bit out of alignment but uh, I think they used to be out of alignment anyway <laughs> as long as they could be red I'm sure that's all they were worried about and this end as you can see is not as detailed um, but I have put the coupling that came with the loco in ready to haul some coaches hopefully so here we are looking down on the top of the model and nothing actually here has changed one little bit <laughs> it's exactly the same as you saw the little brief bit my sample one so why am I showing you it again so I, you can see it in a bit more detail and in that I did say about these being removable uh, panels which they are and you might notice there are those little holes little slots and if you count them there are 32 of them so what I'm going to show you now is and I think I, I, I really like this model and this really except for the axle end showing um, is my major criticism of Daypole I think I'm going to show you something. So what you're looking here is obviously the little pack of uh, bits that we got with the locomotive. And what you can see are three dots. And if I bring in a, a pin, a pinhead, you see how small these little dots are. If I go right down onto the packaging. What are they? If you remember, I did say I thought there was an etched grill, um, but in fact that wasn't the case, it's these. So there are, I think, 42 or 40 of these in that little square thing that looked like a, an etched grill. And these are actually handles to be fitted to the top of this model, and as I've said, there are these fit into those little slots and they're the handles that they use to take the panels off and I did try and fit these and to be honest I completely gave up they are absolutely so small and minute that I could not do it I really could not you know I'm getting on a bit I shake a bit my eyes aren't as good yes I know you can have uh, magnifying spectacles and you know t fine tweezers and yes I'm sure people do it on that website I went on they did show them all in and they do look very effective but to be honest when you see how small they are is it really gonna matter a lot uh, it might do for a proper person that wants absolutely authentic uh, running um, like Dean Park or New Junction for instance or even Charlie Bishop at uh, Chadwick Model Railway um, but for me with my train set no so I'm going to leave those in the packet I'm afraid and uh, 
I will try and take a picture with my still camera of what they actually look like, but they are so small it is in unbelievable. Perhaps John at uh, Piccadilly, Engage, might be able to do them because he's used to doing small bits, but no way could I do them. So all I would say today, Paul, on this particular instance is could they not have been incorporated in the moulding? It would have saved a lot of trouble. And to actually have to fit 32 of these little tiny little bits, I think is unacceptable um, for probably the majority of modellers. Um, you know, we're all getting on a bit, although it, it's very promising that young people are coming in um, and we need them, don't we? And they might well try that, but I don't think they'd have the patience to fit all these. So there's my little, uh, if you like, rant on, on this model. So just to finish off on this review, I'm not going to give any scores or anything. I will say I like the model. I am really pleased I bought it and it does run beautifully, as you will see later on. Uh, and I will do the sounds in the running bit rather than while it's sitting here. Uh, you've seen the lights. Um, in the picture... Um, as I said earlier, I've got the Earl of St Germans, the castle class, and also obviously the Hornby 66 with its lights on from the previous uh, video, which I will run round at the same time as we show this one. So why have I got the castle class, you ask? Um, well, in, in the research that I did, and I do think doing this review makes you sort of look on the internet to find out what's what, um, and if you remember, I mentioned about me as a lad going on the Merchant Venturer to Western Supermare. So, and I said I thought this may have pulled it um, because it was around the right sort of time. So, went in and found uh, Wikipedia as, as usual, and it only ran that train for 11 seasons. Um, and when it was steam hauled, it was hauled by a castle class. I'm not saying it was hauled by Earl of St Germans, but it was certainly hauled by a castle class. That's what it says. So it then went into the diesel age, and I thought, oh, great, it's going to have the 52 pull in it. <laughs> not at all. It was the warship. The warship pulled it, not the 52. So I'll have to get a warship, won't I, if I want to do a proper merchant venture. Uh, and those carriages for that were the type that I'm going to use for this little um, running. Um, but I tried and tried to find a picture of this loco or this, this liveried loco pulling those type of coaches, and I could not. The ones that were pulling them were always the maroon ones, so it won't be quite right. Not that I bother, remember, it's a train set, but just for the people that uh, might say, well, you know, you haven't got the right carriages. Um, I don't mind. I'm, it's my train set. I'll, do, I'll run what I like. So um, let's see how we get on, shall we? And uh, I hope you'll enjoy it running. If you've enjoyed this review or not, will you please let me know in the comments? Uh, because if, if you do like it, and you like the way I've done it, um, I might even put some ballast down on these tracks in the fiddle yard, um, because I think the back scene works a bit, doesn't it? And if you're wondering what the, um, the wagons are in the uh, tunnel there, um, I think they're T... TAA wagons, uh, the oil wagons, um, which I took that picture, or rather found that picture, when I weathered um, my ones. Um, so they're the Hornby, the ones that look toy-like, <laughs> and I, that's why I made them as bad as they are, because that's the picture I got. So anyway, um, waffling on, and we'll get on to the running. So the driver's got in his cab because he's been given the go-ahead to go and couple up to his carriages in Paddington Station. 
or in my case, Robert's End. So he needs to start, doesn't he? Let's uh, get a give it a start. Well, I think immediately we can see that the, the diesel is a lot uh, more um, muted, isn't it? I think that's because of the hydraulics. Um, this is the sound um, level that came from the factory. I haven't altered anything. Well, I think it's time to go, so I think maybe a little horn. And I think we should uh, start departing. As it goes into the darkness. So uh, here she comes up to couple up to the carriages. Well, the train departs. A different sound.
I hope you've enjoyed this and my next video will be on the problems in getting this one to work plus fitting new loudspeakers into some of my locos. Hope you can watch. Please comment, like and subscribe. Well, hello everybody, I just thought I'd add this on the end. Um, as I said, I was going to change the uh, the code on the front, wouldn't I? Because uh, it wasn't very good. So I'm hoping uh, Charlie Bishop will like this one better. Um, as you can see, I've got uh, a 1V14. So I've been online and there's a wealth of information, as we know. So I went into one of the uh, um, codes um, sites and I learned that uh, the V is for the West Coast so um, or West Country so and the one is a, a passenger express um, 14 is the route whichever <laughs> so I put this in um, and obviously in doing so I needed to take the body off so I don't know if you can see but we've got a driver in there um, and I've got to say, getting out the cab bit, out the loco, is not as easy as in the Hornby 66. Uh, because it actually, that's what the body actually screws into. Um, so, yeah. So I think probably it was glued a little bit. But it goes in really, really tight. Really tight. So anyway, I hope, uh, hope you like this. And, uh, yeah, the website I found was really good. Because it, it even has the codes for the steam trains with the white discs on them and what they mean so very interesting amazing what you work out when you've got a, a train set isn't it so i'll pan in a bit closer to the uh, the driver so as you can see he's uh, quite homely there um he's very tall and um, unfortunately as with all these drivers he's had his legs chopped off but uh, just about fitted with a bit of trimming um, broke his arm off so I managed to relocate that onto the dashboard which is quite nice so hope you like it everybody so uh, I have thoroughly enjoyed um, playing with this loco um, so pretty good pretty good cheers everybody cheers Thank you very much for watching. Bye.